So if you've visited my channel, you might have seen a video on there where I make a pincushion, one of these in fact, and several others. Um, and I do mention in that video that you don't need a lathe to make a pincushion. It's just handy because it's easy to make a, a piece of wood round on a lathe and then you can sort of make whatever patterns and stuff you want in it. Um, but you don't. All you need is a piece of wood, or it doesn't have to be wood, but something with a hole in it that you can put a cushion in. So something like these, for example. These are obviously walnut shells. I made these a while ago. And this is quite a traditional thing. I think you would have probably found these about Victorian times before that. You know, it's a simple and easy way of making, and cheap, of making a little pin cushion. And all it is is literally just walnut shell with a velvet cushion in. And obviously, if you've ever been around sort of antique shops or anything like that, you will have seen ones made in boots or, you know, boot shapes and animal shapes and, and a whole host of other shapes. But, yeah, of course, like I said, all you need is a piece of wood or something that you can put a cushion into. So what I've started doing here, this is a piece of birch. Nothing special. It's just a, an off cut off a larger piece, kind of like that. And all I've done is made a hole in it using a force and a bit, about the size that I want my cushion to be. I've roughed out, very roughly, a sort of shape. I guess it's kind of like a, I don't know, teardrop or something. And all I've started doing is just putting a little bit of a recess around the edge so that when I tuck the cushion in, it'll pop in there and it'll hold it. And all I'm doing is I'm just using this, which is a bit of a multi-tool. And then once that's done, I will cut this out and sand it up a bit better and maybe thin it a little bit. It doesn't need to be quite that chunky. But like I said, you can do this with hand tools. You don't need to put the recess in, obviously. You could just get your piece of wood, put a hole in it, and there you're done, basically. But um, I just like to put the recesses in because I find the, the cushions fit better in them. So I'm just going to carry on making the recess around here. And then I'm going to cut it out. And to do that, like I said, I'm going to use this. It's just a multi-tool, kind of like a Dremel. And I'm just going to sand around the inside until I've got a bit of a, a lip, basically. All right. Okay, so you can just about make it out. There's the little lip recess, whatever you want to call it. And uh, now I'm just going to cut this out. I'm going to use my bandsaw because it's quicker. Um, it's nothing special. It's just a little sort of hobbyist bandsaw. It's not a massive one. But you could cut this out uh, with a coping saw or a jigsaw or if you've got one, a scroll saw. So yeah, I'll just go and cut this out. And then... Uh, I'll give it a sound and maybe look at a bit, make it look a little bit nicer. Right, so there's the basic shape cut out. Obviously, it needs some tidying up, which I'm just going to do on my bench sander. Um, again, just because it's quicker, I've even managed to get, you can see there, some of the spalting in the uh, in the wood. That's basically just caused by a fungus where it's attacked the wood. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to give it a bit more of a sand, smooth the edges so it's a bit more, and it's quite, a, well, I wouldn't say it was quite chunky, it's actually probably not much difference in size to one of the little round ones I've made. But again, as I sand and take bits off, it'll sort of reduce in size. It's not very heavy, although if it was on a desk, it wouldn't move about very easily when you're sticking pins and needles in it. So I'm just going to get on and shape the rest of it now. All right, there's where I'm at with it. So I've used power sanders and various other gizmos to get it to a rounded shape. So it's less sort of angular. 
now I'm just using a piece of sandpaper to finish it off and then once I'm happy with the finish I'll um, give it a good wax and then I can make a pad for it same way as I've made the other pads um, and then it will be done but it does take a little bit longer obviously because you're not using machinery especially if you do everything by hand but, uh, I think the outcome is just as good if not better in some ways when you do it by hand so I'll keep sanding this until I'm happy with it and then I'll I'll make the pad yeah I think it'll look quite nice once it's done there we go finish sanding now I'm just going to give it a coat of this wax I use this for quite a lot of the stuff that I make because I find it gives a nice shine once it sets and it's quite durable but you can see the difference in the wood once you put a bit of wax on it right that's one coat on I will probably let this soak in and set for a while then I'll get a give it another coat and then give it a good buff up while the wax is setting I can make another pad for it so there we go Perhaps the shape isn't everybody's cup of tea and the wood itself birch not many people like birch but i think you can get some good especially if you find a piece that's got some spalting in it you get some interesting patterns and they're unique to each piece of wood which is handy so even if i was to have even if i had another piece of wood that this came from and it's got spalting in it the pattern won't be the same so all right okay i'll get on and make the pad then right there it is all done i've chosen like a, a tie-dye kind of fabric because it sort of matched the uh the patterns made by the spalting in the wood and that's it really same method as the other pin cushions once you've made your little pad you can just poke it in to the hole you've made and now uh, there you go so there it is again might not be everybody's sort of shape but it actually kind of fits nice in the hand like that i don't know if that would be an advantage when you're sewing or not i have no idea so my sewing skills are rudimentary at best but there you go so you don't need a lathe to make a pin cushion you can make them with hand tools you don't have to make them shaped or if you do you could use a heart shape a star shape or whatever shape you decide to to go with you can even make them round as well you know you can make them out of scrap bits of wood what have you got lying about really same with the material so there you go one uh, pin cushion made by hand more or less right thanks for watching